Hey, what's going on, Diecast peoples? I'm going to show you guys a couple of finds from uh, lately. This is a Hobby Lobby find. The uh, Chevy Silverado. This is from the new anniversary series. This is the Red Line Edition. Believe me when I tell you, this is a just an awesome looking truck. It is the cleanest looking Silverado Greenlight has put out. In my opinion, this thing is on par with a Kyo show or something like that. It's a very, very high quality execution. Transparent lens headlights and indicators with the uh, detailed tampos. And the silver color, definitely, I mean, like I've, I've been saying in videos lately, this color has really grown on me um, for this scale. It's going to start being my default color on uh, 1 to 64 scale. Obviously, I, I don't want everything in silver, but if I have a couple of options, I'm definitely going to consider the silver if it's available. Um, it just, it exaggerates all of the detail and it just makes it look so, so clean. And I have a couple of other silver cars that we'll be looking at in this video to prove my point. But I did an entire video on that, so if you don't believe me, you can check out the video I did. It was probably a month or two ago. But silver is a great color for 1 to 64. Black is not. Although the black cars look great, but they don't necessarily display great and they're definitely not good for doing videos. <coughs> anyway, so I found that yesterday. <sighs> Where to go? Today at my Walmart. It's an Auto Japan M2 Auto Japan model kit. nineteen seventy Nissan Fairlady Z four thirty two. Now look at the wheel options there. Obviously they have black because they always have black. But they have gold. I had to get it. Just for the wheels. If nothing else for the wheels. Um so we've now seen the Hako and the Fair Lady in the model kits. I'm assuming that the Bluebird will be coming next, but what I'm really looking for are looking forward to is the 1 to 24 scale Hako and Bluebird. Um, also, I don't know if I've announced this, for those of you that don't follow ZA3 collectibles, Greenlight announced Tokyo Torque 3, and there is going to be a 1970 and 1971 Nissan GTR Skyline. So hopefully they don't butcher it like they did the Fair Lady. Uh, the the green light bluebird should start hitting here probably in a couple of weeks. So hopefully uh, we can get a good look at that and pray that it's not butchered like the Z. I did get two of these, so I put one of them together. It's a great casting by M2. Where they missed the mark on this is in the stance. Now... There are two base options for this car. There's a lowered base, which is what this one is. And then there's the standard. The standard base, I think, looks more realistic. It sits up a little higher, which that obviously isn't realistic. But with this one, the silhouette is fine. The side, the profile of the car is good. But when you get it at the right angle, those wheels just sit way too far inside the wheel wells. So that is my complaint with it, but it's still a nice looking car, it displays really nice, and if you look at this tooling and you compare it to the green light, um, on a scale of 1 to 100, I would, I would give the TLV 240 a 95, um, and it's the best one out there by far. I would give the Kyosho probably somewhere around a 75 and I give this one probably around a 65 to 69 somewhere in that range 
I would give the the green light probably a twelve. It's it's just horrible. But we don't need to spend any more time talking about how bad the green light casting is. This casting is good. If they would have got the stance right on this, I would give this thing easily an 80 plus. But I do like the gold wheels. Um, so I'll find a use for those other gold wheels. I'll find a Skyline or a 510 to put it on. Because 99%, or not 99, probably 90% of the Auto Japan cars that they're putting out have black wheels. And it just takes away so much from the detail of the car. So, <clears throat> the problem with these castings <coughs> is that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> frog in my throat. The problem with these M2 Auto Japan castings is that the wheels are significantly smaller than any of the other M2 cars. So you can't just borrow wheels off of another M2. There probably are some that would work, like some of the Volkswagen wheels would probably work. But otherwise, I mean, you could use any M2 wheel, but they're not going to roll. So... I almost wish M2, <clears throat> I almost wish they would put out a line of wheels and tires. Just like an accessory lineup. I think that would be pretty popular. Since the cars are easy to customize and you can do wheel swaps real easily, it would only make sense that they would sell custom wheels. I don't know why they don't. But anyways, uh, this does have transparent lens headlights. And tail lights are not transparent lenses, but they are fo uh, foil tampoed, which is, I think, the next best thing. So, nice little car. I like the uh, livery on this, the orange and white. It's a, it's a good look, I think. So, anyways, got that. Now, on with the video, on with the theme of the video, now that we're eight minutes in, uh, I have a 20-year-old truck that has a pretty bad power steering leak, and once every month or two, I have to stop and get a quart of power steering fluid. So today, I stopped into an auto zone by my work that I've, I've never been to this auto zone, and this car was hanging on the pegs. So I was kind of surprised to find that because the area that I live in is vicious for die cast. It is just brutal trying to collect in Phoenix. It's really, really hard. You have to be you have to be really on your game. Not that this is anything special, but I'm pretty sure if any other die cast collector would have gone in there, they Although they are a couple dollars more at AutoZone, so that might have had something to do with it. But but this is a pretty desirable tooling right now, the RX-3. So, um, anyways, this car has made three appearances in the Car Culture series. Uh, I think it's tied with one of the Porsches. I don't remember which one, but one of the Porsches has also been out three times. <clears throat> um, the first one was in Auto Japan 1, the purple one. And then this was the second one here in the race day set. And then everybody knows about the third one, which was in Japan Historics 2. Uh, this is my favorite one. I actually like the graphics and everything on this. But if I had to pick between racing graphics and uh, like real life detail, I would take the detail. So just to give you an example, I'll show these side by side. Same car, same casting. And there is your front end detail. 
A lot of awesome sculpted detail, but I mean, which one looks better? There's no question. I do wish on this one here that they would have painted the base black. They really should have. <coughs> and that's just the headlight detail. Then on the back, we have a whole other issue with the taillight detail. Which, by the way, Hot Wheels did a sick job on. So, anyways, that's my, my thought on that. Headlight and taillight detail is more important to me than racing graphics. But I do like this yellow uh, release, so I'm glad I found it to pick it up. Um, I wanted to show you guys, though, because <coughs> all these... <coughs> let me take a drink here. Oh. <clears throat> all of these Hot Wheels collectors are, well, especially like the JDM collectors, they seem to be pretty fond of this RX3 casting, which I don't think anybody really knew what the car was because I don't think these were commercially available in the United States. If they were, they were very limited. But um, overseas, they were pretty popular and at least over in Japan. Here's an Aoshima. It's the same exact car, same year. And just a much better uh, replication of the car. It, this model here really shows you how cartooned this one is. It's a cool looking car, but it's definitely a cartoon car compared to what the car actually looks like. Now this is not a stock RX-3. This has been customized, it's been slammed. Uh, there are fender flares. It's got the, the rear spoiler added. But compared to a lot of the Aoshima cars, this one is, the customizations on this one are pretty mild. There's your front end, transparent lensed headlights. Painted or tampoed indicators. I don't know which. Frankly, doesn't matter much. And then you have transparent lensed taillights and indicators with a lot of detail. So, just to show you. Hot Wheels did a good job with it, but they're not on the same <clears throat> not on the same level but also one of them is a playing toy the other one's a model one of them is five to six dollars the other one is probably around 20 so anyway so there's that then if you want to see what that car looks like without the customization with just a just a stock look. I have one of those here too, I'll show you. Just want to clean it up a little bit. These black cars get fingerprints. So here is the Kyosho. This is just a bone stock Mazda RX-3. Uh, this one might be a different year, but if it is, it's not more than a couple years off. The basic uh, body style is pretty close to the same. The wheels on this one are what I would call ridiculously nice. Uh, some of the nicest 1 to 64 scale prototypical wheels I've seen. They are very highly detailed. Uh, the car in general is very highly detailed. And like the Aoshima, this one also has the uh, transparent lens to insert headlights. 
and tr transparent lensed insert tail lights indicators so the the tail end is different on this one which is why i think it might be a different year but i like to keep this kiosho with the aoshima <clears throat> because it gives you a pretty good idea of what the car looks like at stock and what it looks like with the uh, <clears throat> with the customization so but yeah I really dig I dig both of these I think they're both awesome looking now this one has the deep dish wheels very low profile tires. These are both rubber tires with tread. This one just has the stock steelies. So very cool. <coughs> There's so much awesome die cast out there for you guys to get. You just got to look for it. You got to know where to find it. And yes, sometimes you have to pay for it because these two cars aren't really aren't that cheap. But since we're on the subject of Mazda, so those are the Savannah RX-3s. Here's a Savannah RX-7. This is from Konami, which is another premium detailed brand. Some of these cars have been seen in previous videos. In fact, all of them probably have. Uh, but made by Konami, you've got the uh, peanut butter color interior there with the not sure what color green you would call this but this car was also available in red and I think there were three colors I don't know what the other color was I just know green and red but this does have transparent lens uh, tail lights and indicators does not have transparent lens headlights because it is a closed headlight model but it does have prototypical wheels and it does have rubber tires with tread it does have sprung suspension and it's a very very good rolling car and frankly it's a sick looking little car I think the stance on it, it might sit a little bit high, but not too bad. It's definitely a nice, <clears throat> nice little premium model. It's the nicest first gen RX-7 that I've seen in the scale. Now, I think there might be a, a nicer one out there. I'm not sure if Kyosho did one. I would love to see Tomica Limited Vintage do this car. But I'd actually prefer them to do this one, which is the second gen Mazda RX-7. So this is also Mazda Savannah. So now we've seen the RX-3, the first gen RX-7. This is the second gen RX-7. I don't have a third gen. Hot Wheels put one out that you, it's actually on the pegs now in green. The last one was yellow. I think there was a red one. The nicest one that they've done is the navy blue with the headlights and taillights. It looks, it looks really good. But it's tough to beat Kyosho, which is what we have here. This one is also close headlights, but it still has the transparent lens headlights. Tampoed indicators, really nice silver color. Prototypical OEM wheels, rubber tires with tread. This one does not have the sprung suspension. Kyosho does not do that. Now the tail lights on this are a little bit different. They are transparent lensed, but something about the way they did that leaves a little to be desired in my opinion. Because from certain angles, it looks like they just put stickers on there. But when you look at it closely, it's clear that it's a lens tail light assembly. So it's an awesome little car. I really like this 
Kyosho RX-7. And I'm glad that I have it in silver. Silver would be my first choice of color for this car. Now working our way up the lineage of the rotary brand. This is the Mazda RX-8 which wasn't all that popular when it came out. I don't think, I think a lot of people, myself included, uh, didn't really like the looks. They should have left it a coupe. I'm really not that fond of this suicide door. However, my neighbor has one of these, a red one. And every day when I drive by it, it grows on me a little bit more. And as it turns out, I actually like the RX-8 now. It's grown on me. And I think it's a, it's a unique car with character. And it's a modern car with character. And there aren't a lot of modern cars that have character. Yeah, there really has, hasn't been for a while. But this is definitely one of those unique designs that I think... Even in 20 years, you'll see one of these and you'll know exactly what it is. <coughs> so this is another Kyosho model, which also has transparent lens headlights and taillights with an exceptional amount of detail. Very, very nice prototypical wheels. And it's a really nice roller. So the thing is, I'm a premium Toyota collector in this scale. I drive, a, well, I drive a Lexus, basically a Toyota. And I'm just a fan of Toyotas. Um, there aren't a lot of Toyotas out there in this scale, at least not premium detailed. The TLV does a decent amount. Konami did a few. And Kyosho has done a handful. But there are even less Mazdas out than there are Toyotas. So when you do find premium detailed Mazdas, for me, it's pretty cool. I like to pick them up. Um, just a couple more real quick. Here is... Oh, I think this is an MX-5. It's a little Mazda Miata. And it is a premium detailed Mazda Miata. So it does have prototypical wheels, rubber tires with tread, transparent headlights and taillights. And this car is made by Konami. From their cars of the 80s. Most of the Konami stuff that's out there is the vintage stuff. The cars of the 80s seem to be harder to find. They did a Honda Civic. They did a Nissan 300Z. They did the Honda Prelude. Um, they did this. They did a couple of Toyota Celicas. So they did some cool ones, but they it doesn't seem like they show up as often as the older vintage stuff. But this is a cool little car, though. I dig it. And then the last one. Speaking of vintage Konami, I don't know what year this is, but I think it's around 1970-ish. And it is a Mazda Familia Rotary Coupe. And it has a little bit of a tire issue. That's kind of a bummer. Actually, it looks like it might have a couple of tire issues. This side, the tires look good. On the other side, we have issues. 
Now, the Mazda Familia Coupe from Konami is one of those cars where, you know, with Konami, you have your basic, uh, I don't know how to explain this. The Toy Pimp has a pile of them. And basically, oh, the Konamis, they're 10 bucks a piece. But there's a separate side pile with the premium models that cost more. And this is one of the few cars from Konami that carries a little bit of a premium. Not nearly as much as the Toyota Starlet, which as far as I know, that one is the most expensive toy uh the most expensive Konami car, regardless of whether you get the green one or the red one. But this one is not your average ten dollar Konami. So if you go onto eBay and you see one of these for ten dollars or even fifteen dollars shipped that's probably a pretty good price for it. Really nice detail, transparent lens brake lights. Transparent lens headlights. Really nice prototypical wheels. And this car has great lines to it that are going to be kind of hard to show at this angle with the camera but get down to a street view and this is a sharp looking little car Anyways, that's going to do it. Another half hour looking at diecast. Premium detailed Mazda castings. So there you go. Feel free, everybody, to leave your comments, questions, and thoughts below. Thank you, as always, for uh, checking out the channel, checking out the video, and I guess I'll just have to holler at you all at the next one. One thing I did, um, if you follow me on IG, I did a, a Cadillac vi uh, video last night, and my camera freaked out, my, my iPad freaked out, and I had to reset it. And that happens every couple of months. I have to reset my iPad because it won't let me upload content. So the video was lost. So there will be another video to come for Cadillacs and also a premium detailed Nissan Skyline video is on the way. And if you guys, if any of you are Skyline fans, that's a video you're probably going to want to check out. Because uh, it's one one car that I have a fairly decent little collection of is Nissan Skylines. So, anyways, uh, thank you. Tomorrow's hump day. Let's all not work too hard, and let's all have a good rest of our week. And let's all find some awesome diecast out there. So, y'all take care. <laughs>